This is the second tutorial describing our clustering algorithm SWIFT. In this tutorial we will show you how to visualize the SWIFT output data, looking particularly at the format of the output files and how cluster visualization can be achieved even using some of the standard flow cytometry analysis programs. After it's finished the clustering run, Swift writes several output files to the same folder that originally contained the data, the T file. So here's the original file down at the bottom, and the other nine files represent different kinds of output produced by the Swift clustering algorithm. The names are made up by taking the original name and adding a descriptive word or two at the end to indicate what type of file it is. So I'll show that simply as the ID being your particular file name followed by the uh, standard suffix. First of all the template mat file is the file that contains the final template information after Swift has finished on the s clustering, splitting and merging steps it produces a cluster template that is then used to assign all the events to clusters. That template is very useful for further analysis and that will be described in part 3. The Swift config file contains all the specific settings that were set up uh, particularly in the, the user interface window that are unique to this particular run and so this allows the run to be reproduced in the future. There are two files, the merge cluster sizes and split cluster sizes, that contain information on the number of events that have been assigned to each of the clusters. So the cluster list is on the left, the number of cells or events per cluster is shown in the second column. These numbers can be fractional because they represent the probabilities of cells being assigned to each of those clusters. There are two more files, the merge medians and the split medians, which are also text files in a tabular form. And in this case, the values given are the medians for each channel and for each cluster in the sample. So the rows are the clusters once again, and each column is a separate dimension, uh, showing all the medians of the clusters. The Swift FCS file is a large file that contains the unaltered original data as well as additional gating features. It contains the merged median information for each cluster and the split median information and those are provided as extra parameters for use in different flow cytometry analysis programs. And the way we do that is shown in the next couple of slides. Here you see a conventional bivariate plot of forward scatter and side scatter in Flojo, and this sample contains almost 4 million cells, so it's very densely plotted. If instead of the forward scatter and side scatter, we plot the medians of the clusters on the same uh, dimensions, forward scatter and side scatter, then we see that we have a much, much simpler plot. We can These appear as parameters on the standard parameter list. Uh, on this pull-down. If we choose the MMFSC, that's plotting all the cells at the merged medians, and because there are only a few hundred clusters, that means we only have a few hundred dots on this plot, instead of the four million cells that you saw originally. We also have included extra parameters in the file that provide an easy way to access the number of each cluster. So let's say for example that you would like to identify all the cells in cluster number 157. That's encoded in three parameters, split 1E2, you would set for 1, so it's 100. Split 1E1, it would be 5, and the units are given as, as 7. So if you set those three gates, just on a plot of split E1 and uh, split 1E0 and a th third dimension you'll need to show of um, split 1E2 then you can identify just that single cluster and examine its properties further. 
In the next few minutes we will demonstrate how cluster gating can be used to analyze samples conveniently uh, using a commonly used flow cytometry analysis program, Flojo, and that will allow you to compare the display of cluster medians and individual events. One of the output files from Swift is the swift.fcs file, which contains cluster information in a format suitable for manipulating in popular flow cytometry analysis programs. For this tutorial, we will use Flojo, but the file format is FCS 3.0, so other analysis programs should also work. To demonstrate this, we will use a human PBMC sample stimulated with influenza antigen. We can perform conventional gating, first by forward and side scatter, then uh, forward scatter width versus uh, live dead marker, then CD3 and CD14 to focus on T cells, then CD4 and CD8 to identify CD4 T cells. If we plot these results then on CD69 versus CD45 RA, this shows the activated T cell population here. But the CD69 staining is not very strong, and the activated cells are more of a shoulder on the CD69 axis than a defined population. Nevertheless, if these cells are displayed on interfering gamma and IL-2 axes, a clear population of influenza-responsive CD4 T cells is seen. We can perform a very similar procedure using the cluster median values written by Swift. If we copy the scatter plot, we can then change the axes to display the cluster median value. So first for the forward scatter, we can scroll down to the SMFSCA. Uh, this is going to plot the cluster medians of the split clusters. We could also use the merged medians by using the MM values. So the SMFSCA and the split medians of the side scatter give us this plot and we can increase the dot size and make it a dot plot to allow it to be seen more easily and what you're looking at here is a plot uh, where each dot represents one cluster and there may be many many cells thousands of cells in one of these dots but because all the cells in one cluster are plotted at their cluster medians you get a much simpler pattern than the full dot plot shown above we can now gate on these clusters in exactly the same way as we did on individual cells. So using an analogous series of gates, we can go through the gating down to activated CD4 T cells. And notice there's a striking difference when we look at the CD45 RA versus CD69 plot. Instead of the shoulder that we see in the individual cell gating, we now have several clearly defined clusters that are well separated from the unstimulated cells. Gating on these clusters and displaying that on interferon gamma and IL-12 axes shows just about five clusters of cells expressing IL-2 and interferon gamma, equivalent to cells identified by traditional gating above. At any stage in this process, the cells can be examined either as clusters or as individual cells. So in this final panel, changing the gates to individual cell values allows us to see that the IL-2 positive, interfering gamma positive cells isolated by Swift clustering here are mostly the same cells identified by the manual gating process, although SWIFT typically identifies slightly more of the target cells. Conversely, the SWIFT background of the double negative cells is very low, much lower than the background of cells isolated by conventional gating. This improved signal-to-noise ratio is due to the ability of SWIFT to delineate clusters simultaneously in all dimensions. If we then look at back gating, to see where these cells come from. With the conventional cells, the back gating looks like this. And you can see that the gates need to be the size that they are. It's difficult to shrink any of those gates further. However, if we look at the back gating of the SWIFT cluster analysis, we get a somewhat different 
pattern. Now you can see that the clusters are actually isolated well in the center of all of these gates. And this is typical that swift cluster gating is much easier than conventional gating because the boundaries are much less critical. That concludes Tutorial 2, the visualization of Swift output data. In Tutorial 1, we showed you how to install Swift and perform a basic clustering of one sample. And in Tutorial 3, we show how to use Swift templates to assign multiple samples and compare across large numbers of samples.